Hi everybody! Welcome, welcome! Let me check on you guys here. Perfect. Alright. How is everybody doing today? I'm just melting my ice melt right now, so let me check on that. Hello, hello. Let's see. There we go. Welcome on, guys. How's everybody doing today? Awesome. Hey, Jesse Ann, how are you? I'm just starting by melting my clear ice melt right now. One more, and then I'm gonna melt our blue glitter as well. All right, I'm super excited to show you guys this demo today. I have the piece right back here. Here, let me grab that. So we're going to be making our 3D butterflies. So this live is really going to be focused on just bringing our uh, really pretty, simple isomalt butterflies that we normally make to the next level by actually sculpting. Um, this will be a great introduction to sculpting as well if you are newer to pulled isomalt, just to kind of get into it a little bit and practice with it. And we're going to be kind of building this all into one sculpture on top of our dome here. I'm going to show you some super fun marbleizing techniques with the dome as well. Okay. All right, so I just melted my clear isomal. Now I'm popping in my blue glitter. Hey, Tahisha, how are you today? All right, everything look and sound okay on your end, guys? Let me know. Make sure before we get started. Welcome, welcome. Make sure to let me know in the comments where everybody is watching from. We can get to know each other as we get started here. Make sure I have everything I need. Hi Rochelle, how's it going? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is going to be a fun one. Hey, Stacy. Paula in Mississippi. Hello. Make sure to please share this broadcast to, um, to your profile, to your sugar friend groups. Um, I would love it if you did. Michelle's in California, awesome. Thanks for co uh, coming and tuning in. We'll get started here in just a minute. I'm just melting my ice malt in the microwave. So of course we are using our semi ice malt uh, tiles today. So it's pre-cooked and ready to use. No temperatures, no recipes, nothing. You just melt it down in the microwave until it's a liquid and until it comes to a boil and then uh, it's ready to use. So it makes it super duper easy. Having it already pre-cooked and tempered, it takes all the guesswork out for you. Uh, and it's already gonna be super crystal clear, no air mixed in or anything like that. So that's perfect to use to make our butterflies today. All right. So we did have, um, or we do have an accessory kit that comes, uh, that you can get with this project that goes with along with the project. Um, and we always do a discount on our accessory projects for Playdate uh, specifically. But if you are just using your own ice malt, you can also color your own today. But what we're gonna be using is uh, some clear ice malt, some blue glitter ice malt, and then some black ice malt. So whether you are using your accessory kit that you got from our website or you are coloring, uh, melting and coloring your own, or you have some that was pre-colored, that will work. You can also change up the colors 
however you like, but you definitely want that clear for the wings and the black for the body. I guess you could also go a little bit more artistic and do, you know, pink or purple or something for the body if you wanted to, but the black is really striking and going to be kind of the most realistic. Uh, even though we are, of course, making a stained glass butterfly, I still like to add those little bits of realism in there. Hi, Sharon. Welcome on. Hey, Crystal. Thanks for tuning in, guys. All right, I'm just melting my ice malt right now, making sure it's all ready to go. And we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I will show you guys the piece again uh, that we're going to be making today. Hey, Susan. All right. So here is our beautiful butterflies. You can see this is kind of our uh, basic ice malt butterfly sort of shape uh, here that we have talked about in the past. We did it for our last skill social zoom. Super fun, super easy, but I really wanted to take these butterflies to the next level and give you guys something that's even more uh, really striking and show stopping. And we also have these beautiful stained glass wings uh, that just came out, these designs of a whole bunch of different colors. So I wanted to kind of bring those together and show you guys the 3D effect with the butterfly wings. So instead of just pouring the wings and kind of using the butterfly as it is, we're actually going to pour the wings separately and assemble them onto the sculpted body of our butterfly. So I'm going to show you how I build all of that. And then of course making this really pretty sort of marbleized glittery ice malt dome at the bottom with some fun semi color splash tips in there as well because it is semi color splash month. Our semi color splash anniversary, our two year anniversary is this month. So we have been having tons of fun stuff happening on all of our social media pages. Hey Brooke, let's see, hi Joni is on from South Carolina, hi Trisha, all right, yeah, um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat, uh, I'm more than happy to answer questions as you guys go, I have my iPad set up down here, uh, and then mom and dad are also here monitoring the comments, so if you guys have any questions, they will make sure that I don't miss anything, all right. So like I said, we're just starting out by melting our semi ice melt in the microwave for 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals. Uh, like I said, if you are using the accessory kit for this project that we have on our website, then you will just melt the ice melt as is and then um, just use it because it's already pre-colored. But if you want to add in your own color from the clear, you can use either an edible airbrush color, a water or alcohol based color, such as of course the semi color splash colors, which are water based, uh, but any airbrush color is fine for this. And then you can also use powdered colors. So you can use petal dust, uh, luster dust, things like that to get more solid colors. I wouldn't use it for anything that you want to be glassy because powders always come out more solid, but uh, as far as the more opaque finishes and metallic finishes with the luster dust, they come out really pretty. Just make sure you never ever mix in to uh, mix ice, ice malt with gel color. Don't mix gel color into the ice malt because it will break down the ice malt and not allow it to dry properly. So um, I do not recommend gel mixed into ice malt, but you can paint it on top, which we'll be talking about a little bit later if you wanted to. So either a liquid or powdered color if you are going to be mixing your own glitter in for the blue glitter, just make sure it's not a glitter that is going to melt because a lot of uh, edible glitters um, like cake sparkles and things like that are um, melt very easily melted. They will melt from heat, so make sure that whatever you're using is going to be really, really stable and not affected by the heat. I really like the diamond dust from the Sugar Art. That's my favorite edible glitter to use because it is all edible, um, not just non-toxic. All right, perfect. So we will go ahead and get started. Again, any questions that you guys have, please feel free to write them in the comments or if you're watching afterwards, you can always send me a message here on Facebook on my Facebook page or my personal page or Instagram or email. Um, all of my contact info is around or on my website. So definitely let me know. I'm going to turn you guys down really quick so you can see what I'm doing and then we'll get started. All right, so let me turn my mat really quick around here because I just realized it'll be upside down for you guys. All right, hold on everybody. <laughs> Try and get you guys in the right position. Alright. Let me let my camera catch up here. Make sure you guys are in the right shot. How's that look, everybody? Let's see. Alright. Yes. 
So, so Michelle had a question said. Yeah. Um, she put a cake together and had a piece of ice melt on it. Frosting got on the piece of ice melt and I couldn't get it off to reuse the ice melt. It was a practice cake for me, so I wanted to reuse the ice melt. How do I get the frosting off? Um, you can probably use a little bit, maybe some alcohol and a paintbrush to try and kind of wipe it off, but I don't know that you'll be able to fully get the grease off of it. If it's just a tiny bit, it probably won't affect if you're just using the ice melt for practice. It probably won't affect remelting it, um, but if you want to just break the ice melt up into little pieces and then just pull the pieces off that have frosting, you can still reuse a lot of the big chunk. Um, it's probably going to be the easiest bet to make sure you don't get too much frosting in there. Um, but if it's just a teeny tiny bit, it probably won't make too much of a difference. Uh, if it's a color or something, though, that could affect the, um, the tint of the ice melt. Um, so yeah, I would probably recommend breaking it up and then kind of picking out the pieces that have the icing stuck to it. If you want to um, use it for other projects to prevent that in the future, I would say put a piece of either plastic wrap or foil or something in between the icing and the um, isomalt, and that way it just creates kind of a barrier so that you don't have that problem next time. Right. Perfect. Okay, so we will go ahead and start. Again, any questions you guys have, keep them coming. I um, am just melting my ice melt, so again, I took the um, pre-cooked ice melt tiles, just 30 seconds, and then 15 second intervals in the microwave until it is ready to use, which is when it comes to a boil. So you can see that this one has come to a nice boil, and I do want to let that settle before we are to pour it. Okay, so we're just going to put that off to the side until it stops bubbling, because if you use it right now while there's still air bubbles mixed in, you're just going to pour those bubbles. So you want to make sure it stops boiling, and then I'm also going to melt... I started melting, but I'm going to continue melting my blue glitter because we're actually going to pour our base dome first. But before we go into that, I wanted to show you guys a little bit about what we're going to use for the actual butterflies. So this is an ice melt transfer sheet. Okay, again, this is the design that was inside the accessory kit for this project. The kits are still available as well, but we do have these designs individually um, that you can just get the sheet itself, either as the big butterflies or an assortment of the small butterflies. But you guys know if you ever need different sizes or different combinations of colors or anything, I can always do custom sheets because I do custom printing as well. Um, but these are printed on an ice melt transfer sheet. So see me ice melt transfer sheets are going to be an edible paper. Okay. Um, we work with icing images with these and they are a really awesome edible paper that are really unlike any other kind of edible paper. You can see that they're a little bit see-through, but they actually get more and more see-through when you pour the ice melt on them. And it makes the uh, pattern and the colors really, really vibrant as well as when you pour the ice melt on, it absorbs into this paper. The paper is very thin. It's actually more like a scratch off. So you couldn't actually peel this off without the ice melt um, adhering to it. So when you pour the ice melt on, it absorbs into that thin layer of paper. And when it cools, the plastic backing that it's on will peel away and it actually leaves the design on the ice melt. So that's how we get these beautiful, intricate designs. Super easy. Because of course, you could make an ice melt butterfly just poured and then paint it if you wanted to. Um, but that takes a lot more time and a lot more effort um, and you know time is money as I always like to say so uh, these are re a really nice alternative to get consistency and um, just make it super fast and efficient for you as well as giving you just really really stunning um, beautiful designs so these are some of the new designs that we have there's a uh, I think four different versions of the butterfly I also have the blue one but I thought I would do the orange one today since I already made the blue one but this is the one from the picture, so you can see the big one, of course, is those blues and purples and pinks rather than the oranges. But the orange still has some really pretty kind of flecks of blue in it, so they're both going to match this small butterfly. And I'm going to show you both. All right. And then there's two other color variations on that small butterfly um, page as well. But like I said, we're not going to use these quite yet because I want to get the dome cooling in the meantime. So I'm going to put this off to the side for now, and we will come back to it in just a few minutes. But we are going to use our uh, dome mold here. So this is a semi mold, of course. Um, this is our half dome. And you may have um, a little bit different version of this because we have had some different versions of the same size half dome. One of them uh, was in halves, so you put the two halves together. This one, um, our newest version, is just all in one piece. 
case because it's nice and flexible and you can take this out really easily, but either one will work. You could even use a sphere mold if you wanted to do a full sphere instead of the dome. The reason that I didn't do a full sphere with this is because I wanted it to have a little bit of a wider base so it was really, really stable and it wasn't wobbly. If you're going to do a complete sphere instead of the half um, sphere or the dome, then I would attach it to an ice mold base. So pour out a puddle or pour into a cookie cutter, a greased cookie cutter or a greased cake pan to make a base and then glue that sphere to the base to make sure it doesn't wobble and it's not top heavy because this piece is going to be very top heavy. This having the widest point at the bottom will not need that. So I'm just going to do it right on the, um, the dome here. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of marbleizing, which I'm very excited about. Okay. So I have my blue glitter ice melt here that was melting. I absolutely love our glitter colors, especially right now for summer. This blue glitter is so pretty. It's a little bit hard to see in the bowl right now, but once it comes out, you guys are going to see just how pretty that glitter sparkle is. We have a whole bunch of different glitter colors, too. Alex has been very busy. He has, yes. This is absolutely beautiful glitter colors. We have pinks and yellows, um, blues and oranges. All right, I also have my clear ice malt, which is going to be most of the base of this because I didn't want it solid blue glitter, even though that would be really pretty. I just wanted, since the wings have a very pretty sort of almost like a tie-dye sort of um, look, like stained glass has sort of the variation of color that's very soft and sort of ombre, I wanted to mimic that in the dome. So I'm going to be using the clear as a base to help marvelize it. And then I also have a small cup and my candy apple red semi color splash. So I'm going to have that handy for when we are going to add in a little bit of color streaking as well. All right, so I melted the clear and the blue one right after the other. I don't melt them at the same time because it doesn't, it takes way longer. So it's just easier to melt one at a time and they're both liquid right now. And I just waited until it stopped boiling. So it's not boiling anymore um, and it's not bubbling. So I know that I'm not gonna be pouring any bubbles into this mold. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is just start with some clear at the top. Maybe fill it in a fourth to a third of the way. Then I'm going to take my blue, and you don't have to pour it right in the center. You can kind of do a little swirling. And it's pushing the clear down in a way as well, so it's kind of further marbleizing. Then I'm going to pour a little bit more blue or a clear to break up that blue. Pour it in circular motions. You can go back and forth. Okay, and then I'll do the rest of the way up with some more of this blue. Beautiful. So you can see it has a very pretty sort of um, swirling, really nice marble to it already. All right, if you have any bubbles that just rose to the surface, sometimes you get stray little bubbles, we'll just lightly torch those away to make sure it's going to have a nice flat surface and you're not going to see any bubbles in. And now this would be beautiful just to leave just like this. You don't have to do anything else to it. But I wanted to show you guys a really fun kind of marbleizing effect. I've got a paper towel here so it won't get red on me. Great. So I'm just going to take a couple of drops of the candy apple red right into my cup. You really don't need more than a drop or so. Okay. I'm going to take a toothpick now. You can use a silicone tool, but it could stain your silicone tool. So I'm just going to use a toothpick. I'm going to dip it into the red. Okay, so I'm kind of going back and forth and getting it all up the side. And then I'm going to stir this in. Okay, the red is, of course, going to mix with the blue and give us some really pretty purpley tones. I don't like to put a full drop of color into the ice mold and do this because it will get really sticky. So it will actually, if the color doesn't fully mix into the ice mold, um, it can get sticky on the surface and you just have kind of sitting liquid either staining your mold or kind of catching in your ice malt, and then when you take it out, it could be really sticky. So I don't like to do a ton of this, which is why I like to use the toothpick. Sydney, Stacy wanted to know, did you fill it to the top? I filled it almost to the top. Generally, yes, you would fill it to the top, but um, for mine, I didn't fill all the way just for time's sake, so that it cools by the time we're done with this demo. So it's maybe a fourth of an inch from the top. It's not very far down. But you could potentially fill it shorter if you wanted to. You can fill it lower, um, and that would be really, really convenient if you needed a smaller dome, because you don't have to necessarily fill it to the top. All right. So you see how I have this really pretty, I'm going to lift it, but just be very careful, um, this really pretty design here with the red sort of swirled in, and it also helped to swirl the blue, 
and you get that beautiful glitter in there as well which I love so we're gonna put this off to the side it is a little bit on the larger side so it's gonna take some time for it to cool probably about 25 30 minutes I am gonna put a little fan on it too so if you hear a hum in the background that's what that is and that will just help to cool it down as well Okay, now one thing I forgot to mention, remember guys, that ice melt is hot. So as you're doing all of these techniques, I would highly recommend you wear gloves, generally a cotton glove and then a nitrile or latex glove over top of it. Will help to buffer the heat and protect your hands. Don't stick your finger in it, okay? Um, be very careful, but you know, if you're newer to ice melt, it just takes practice wearing your gloves, of course, but um, you'll gain more and more confidence the more that you work with ice melt, just like you learn how to work with ovens and stoves. As long as you are um, you know, kind of protecting your hands, you won't have any problem, okay? All right, let's see. Uh, Kim said, I used some of your ice melt yesterday and it's still very sticky. Did I do something wrong? I also sprayed it with the PME, but it didn't help. Okay, so there are a couple of tips that I do have with using the PME glaze spray to make sure that it's not sticky. Um, it is crazy humid here as well this time of year, but I still don't have any problem with the stickiness, um, even though it's, it's super, super humid here in Florida. Um, but there is a couple of things that you want to keep in mind. Um, and we can, you know, if you have any more issues or anything like that, you can always message me too. But um, making sure that you spray it right away so you didn't wait any amount of time between when the ice melt cooled and when you sprayed it will definitely help because if you wait too long, the moisture will have already gotten in and you're basically just glazing in moisture you're locking in the moisture rather than locking it out um, also making sure your windows and doors never open to the outside while you're working you have your AC on and nice and cool to help with the uh, humidity coming out those are gonna be my main things I don't work with a de dehumidifier or anything like that even though I'm in super sticky Florida so just kind of a couple of tips there all right perfect all right so we are gonna go on to our next technique let me check my clear ice malt. See, it probably needs another little hit in the microwave. You can remelt ice malt as many times as you want. It doesn't matter how many times you reheat it, as long as you're going in small intervals, so it's not going to be um, burning or anything like that. You want to go very carefully. Okay, I'm going to take my butterfly wings here and just center them. And we're going to fill those in. I'm using my silicone tool for this to push the ice melt around. You can also just use a toothpick or a skewer or a lollipop stick. You could even use a cookie scribe if you want to. I just like the silicone tool because it's um, flexible. And it also, since it's silicone, the ice melt won't stick to it when it's cool. So it's very easy to clean up. And it's a little bit easier to hold than a toothpick. All right. So it brought the ice melt back to a, a little bit of a boil and I'm just going to let those bubbles settle. It's important to never pour the ice melt onto the sheets when the ice melt's boiling because it will be too hot for the sheets and you don't want to damage them. So you always wait for that to cool down. But it is important to bring it to the boil first to get the air out. Now, if you want to practice on some, some of the smaller butterflies, uh, you definitely can do that first. I put a bunch of them in there for practice for you guys because this is something that just takes a little bit of getting used to to kind of feel out the texture of it and how quick you need to work and everything. Um, now, remember that uh, we're not using a form or a guide or anything with this. We're just going slow uh, and just filling it over the surface of the design, basically. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour ice melt onto this in sections. Okay. So with the smaller butterflies, I usually do them in about fourths. Okay. So I'll pour one, two, three, four sections. With the big one, you'll probably want to do a whole lot more than that because if you pour too much and you start to spread it out, by the time you get to the end of the puddle, it could have already hardened because ice melt cools very quickly, especially when it touches this nice cool sheet. Um, just from being in kind of the air conditioning, it's cool, a lot cooler than the ice melt is right now. So we're going to start with the smaller ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so see how that is cooled significantly now. So we're just going to pour little bits at a time. Make sure that your sheet is as flat as possible and your table is as flat as possible. I know that's easier said than done. Um, and sometimes you don't know until you start pouring things like this onto it. But just go slow. I'm not letting the ice milk go all the way to the edge of the design. Okay, so see how it's just barely maybe a sixteenth of an inch away from the edge. Or it can be more because you're just going to spread this. So I'm just spreading the ice melt over, just kind of pushing it. I'm just grazing the top of the ice melt. I'm not 
touching the sheet with the tool because you don't want to scrape it or scratch it. Okay. Pour a little bit more on the other section. It kind of mixed together at the seam there where the two puddles met, and that's good. If you ever do get a little seam between the two, you can lightly torch that before it cools and it'll melt together. I'm not worrying about it being exact exact. It's okay if a tiny little bit kind of goes over the edge. We can fix that later. Or if you don't quite get to the edge of one area, you're not really going to notice that. So now I'll go on the other side. Now this small butterfly, I'm going to show you how we just usually make our normal butterflies. So we're just going to pour the entire thing, including the body, and then we will peel this up and add the bend to it after it's cool. But the big one, we're going to do a little bit different. All right, so see, I'm just pouring it in segments. As long as you don't pour too much, it won't run all over the place. So I'm going really slow. It's better to have to add more isomalt than to pour too much. So you can always add more, but you can't take it away. I like to do the two separate wings and then join them together in the middle at the end, but you can pour this in any sort of system that you want to, starting with any of the areas. It doesn't matter too much. Okay, and then finally I'm just going to pour a little dot in the middle to join those two halves together and fill over the body. And then I don't want to risk pouring too much, so I'm actually just going to dip the tool or your toothpick, whatever you're using, and just drip and kind of spread the ice melt on. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to lightly torch. Yeah. Says the sound is kind of cutting out. Oh, is it cutting out a little bit? Is anybody else having that issue? I'm buffering, but I don't know if that's me or you. Okay. Let's see, I'll stop for a second. Um, if anything cuts out and you didn't hear what I said, please just let me know, guys, and I'll repeat anything that may have been missed. Riva said sound is good on hers. Sometimes with the sound, you have to go off and come back on for some reason, and um, it can load like differently the second time. So if it keeps happening, I would say turn off um, the Facebook app and then come back into it. Okay, keep me updated, guys. All right, so I just lightly torched over the surface of the butterfly just to make sure there was no surface bubbles. And we'll let that cool. Those are only, the small one's only going to take like five minutes to cool because they are so tiny. And then in the meantime, I'm going to pour my larger butterfly. So, of course, you can do a little bit more at once for these. But I still go slow. And I don't pour too much more than I know I can handle spreading out at once. Okay, so I kind of starting along one of the outside edges, just pushing that ice malt over. Okay, adding a little bit more. And if your ice malt gets too thick to pour at any time, definitely make sure to reheat it because you don't want to be fighting with ice malt that's too thick. It won't adhere to the sheet as well. And it also will be very frustrating to try and spread if it's too thick. So if you keep getting cotton candy strings or it's just not moving around easily, definitely go ahead and reheat it and make life easier for yourself. Okay. Now this one, we're not actually going to fill the body because we're going to make a body, right? Now you could do these big butterflies the exact same way as we do the little ones. If you wanted to save a little bit of time and effort and you wanted to simplify these slightly, they're still going to be absolutely beautiful, but they won't take quite as much time. So that's up to you if you want to do that. Okay. So I'm getting within like a fourth to an eighth of an inch of the edge and then using my tool to push it the rest of the way just so I can be a little more precise. It's kind of like using a cookie scribe on royal icing on a cookie. Just guiding it into place. 
And again, I'm not stressing about every little detail exactly matching underneath because we can smooth and trim and we can paint the edges if we need to to kind of tie them together if the black line isn't even. But I did not, um, it overlapped slightly into the body, but I didn't purposely put any on the body. Okay, we're going to make two separate wings. Before this starts to set up, I'm just going to lightly torch away those bubbles. And I'm also going to put this back in the microwave for another 20 to 30 seconds before I start the next wing. Okay, any questions? Let me know. These will take a little bit longer to cool than the um, small butterflies will, just because they're slightly bigger and there's more ice melt there, but it still won't take more than probably 10 to 15 minutes. All right. So I just brought that ice melt back to a boil. When I'm doing crystal clear things like this, I always make sure it comes to a boil in the microwave because if you only like nuke it a tiny bit, it can um, accidentally just kind of stir up the bubbles or sort of uh, make them move and separate, but then not actually boil out. So it kind of can make the ice melt more bubbly if you don't bring it to a boil. Okay, because any little air pockets that may have melted down together or any uh, bubbles stuck to the bowl can kind of release that way. So always bring it to a boil if you're doing something super clear. Okay. All right, so just letting that cool off for a minute before we pour the other half. Now you can also do the small butterflies this way if you want. You don't have to join them in the middle. So if you just want to do a smaller 3D butterfly, or let's say you needed the wings for something else. You just wanted to add the wings directly down into the top of a cupcake, or you wanted to add them to, um, you know, any sort of design that you already have a body for the piece, you absolutely could do that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pour little bits. Okay, start with the bottom this time. So again, I'm not really letting these join in the middle. Okay. And just kind of coaxing it out to that edge. The outer edges are more important, in my opinion, to get done first. The inner edges, you're always going to add more ice melt, so you know that that's not a big deal. But the outer edges are a lot harder to add ice melt to, so I kind of focus on those first. And just guide the ice melt out. It's very relaxing once you start kind of getting into it. It's very zen. that's to the right shape there if they accidentally join in the middle you can always cut them apart later that's not a big deal but I think I cut mine apart all right slightly torch the surface of that half So we will go ahead and let those cool. I'm going to put it off to the side to let that cool all the way down. And let's see. Actually, our small butterfly is ready to come off already. So you can see how quickly those small ones cool. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that while I heat up the black. Since that'll need another 30 seconds or so. Reva says it's the buffering. Oh, is it still buffering? Mine's buffering, but I don't know that it's you. I think it's me. Okay. Let me know, guys, if you're having that issue. And Joni says, like a fairy. Yeah. All right. So I just saw a little bubble there I wanted to get rid of. 
All right, so when the butterflies are cool, don't test it with your finger, okay? Just in case, test it with a clean tool or a toothpick to make sure it's hard. And all you're gonna do is just lift it off so there's no trimming, no cutting. It just releases right off. And you see it transferred the, the pattern right onto the ice malt and it's beautiful and glassy. It really made those colors pop too. Okay, there might be a little bit of excess paper at the edge, but I just take a paintbrush, a clean paintbrush, and just kind of brush that off. All right, perfect. And I'm gonna show you how to bend that if you didn't wanna do them separately and you just wanted it all done in one shot. Let's move this guy over. All right, and then all we're gonna do is this, I have the ice malt side up, so just like it was laying on the sheet, I'm gonna heat the center a little bit. Do this in light layers, because you can always add more heat. Okay, give it like five to 10 seconds. And you can see it's already super soft. Grab my fan here. And I'm just gonna pick that up and add the bend. So it's very pliable. I can bend it as much or as little as I want right now. And then if you get any little wrinkles or elephant skin in the center, it's okay, because after it cools down, you can lightly zap it with the torch again and it'll smooth over the surface. I don't want to do it now because it's already warm. So if I add more heat to it, it's never going to hold its shape. I mean, it will eventually, but it'll just take a lot longer and be harder to hold into place. So it's easier if you get the whole thing cold and cooled down to the core, and then the core will hold its shape while you just melt the surface down a little, if that makes sense. All right, and if you had any big spills, um, you can just torch those areas like I just did and wait about 10, 15 seconds and use the scissors to trim them. If you just have some little spots, like I don't know if you guys can tell, but I have some very small areas that kind of went over the edge, I would actually just paint those. So a lot of times I'll paint around the edges of these with some black color. You can honestly leave them. It's not that big of a deal. Maybe it's easier to see on the black of the fan there. You can leave them, um, but if you wanted to just tie the whole thing together a little bit, I take a little bit of black gel color or petal dust and uh, alcohol or semi color splash airbrush color and just paint a little black around the edge. And it usually just finishes it kind of like a border. Ties the whole thing together. All right, so that's already cool. And that would be ready to glaze and then to go directly into your cupcakes, um, onto your lollipops, onto your cake. You can use ice malt as a glue to stick this to a fondant cake if you wanted to. But we are, of course, going to put it on our sculpture. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull a little bit of ice bolt now because we want to make the body for our big butterfly while the wings cool. And we're still cooling our um, dome as well. I have the fan on it. Hopefully that will be cooled down enough uh, by the time we finish so that you guys can see what that looks like when it comes out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and unroll a second silicone mat on top of my regular silicone mat. I like the double layer to keep the airflow nice and cool. All right, have my ice malt in the microwave. I actually might give it another 20 seconds because it cooled while I was talking. I'm also going to plug my uh, lamp in really quickly, so I'm just going to do that. You don't have to have the heat lamp to do this. But it does help so you can take a little bit more time with it if you have one. All right. And I'm just using my 250 watt heat lamp. So, Sydney, the question is if you want to print your own design, do you use the clear cello sheet? You can use the cello sheets um, with this if you wanted to print your own. I prefer the transfers the way that I'm pouring the butterflies because it releases easier. The um, cello sheets will curl at the edges, so if you're using the clear cello sheets, um, it's a little bit harder to spread it out when the cello sheets are trying to curl against the heat. The transfer sheets stay nice and flat, so that's why I like the transfer sheets. Or you can use an icing sheet as well. It just won't um, have the transparency to it. It'll be a solid background, the white background of the icing sheet. If you were, however, using, let's say, a metal cookie cutter, a grease metal cookie cutter, cutting out the cello sheet first with scissors or an X-Acto, and then setting the cookie cutter on top and pouring into that, you could use the cello sheets that way. I don't really like to do that um, if I have the choice because it tends to make them a lot thicker since you're pouring up to an edge and that flat edge looks a lot thicker, where this goes a lot thinner or at least has the illusion of being a lot thinner. 
So that's why I do it with the transfer sheets without a form. But you can definitely change this up. It'll just take some experimenting to kind of see what versions that you like better. All right, so I melted down my black ice malt. I just love this color. It's super, super pretty, especially against the bright colors of the oranges and blues that we're doing. All right, and we're going to start pulling. So again, wear your gloves for this because it is very, very hot. But we're just going to start folding this nice and slow in alternating angles and just folding in some of that cool air. So this is cooling it down, and eventually this is going to react like dough. It's all going to come together into a ball, and it's going to stop sticking when it's ready. Okay, so I'm just alternating which ways I'm folding. All right. Going nice and slow since it is hot. You don't want to splatter it. And I do want to make sure that it has a lot of good airflow underneath the mat. So I do like to move it over every few folds as well as using this double mat. Because what can happen is if the um, mat gets too hot, the ice milk gets too hot and the mat gets too hot, the silicone pores can actually open up too much from the heat and the ice milk can get stuck down to the mat because it gets stuck in the pores of the silicone. So we want to keep this as cool as possible underneath by moving it around. If you ever do get a stuck spot on your silicone mat, it's not a big deal. Just pull all of the ice milk off that you can release. And then that one little stuck spot, then you just rinse that off in some cool water. And the ice milk generally doesn't stick in that same spot more than once. It's just about where the heat was at that time. So now I'm going a little faster since it is not a liquid anymore. It feels a lot thicker so I can help the mat along from releasing by going quicker, but I'm still folding it kind of edge to edge, so I'm folding the puddle in half. Okay, so I'm not just flipping the whole thing over, I'm actually folding it and getting it unstuck from the mat in different places. Cindy? Yeah. I still have you. I still have it too. <laughs> Are we all having different internet things happening today? Might just be one of those days. Let me know, guys. I don't even have that comment on mine. No, she messaged you. Oh, it came messaged. up on your phone. Oh. <laughs> Let me know, guys. Can you still see me? Let's make sure. I'm still getting comments. You still see me, Dad? Oh, yeah. Yeah, hmm. Lori sees you. You do? Okay. Okay. I'm going to message Reba and tell her okay. we're here. Thank you. Joni says I'll get here, too. Okay. okay. Just one of those tech days. <laughs> okay, good. Rita's good, too. All right. So I'm just stretching and folding a little bit more cool air into the ice malt, making sure that it cools down and hardens the texture a little bit so it's not way too pliable and soft to work with. And I'm going to crumple this up into a ball and put it under my heat lamp. But if you don't have the heat lamp, then you can just immediately start shaping and forming the body of your butterfly. Okay. All right. I'm just propping my fan up a little bit different here so that mm -hmm. it cools down that dome. Actually, maybe I'll move it to the back table because it's a little cooler back here. I do that a lot because you may not even notice it a few feet away from your lamp. It gets significantly cooler. So even all the way over here where the um, form was is a lot hotter, plus I have my studio lights on, than just the tables behind me. So just always keep that in mind if you are in a rush. Okay. So I do have my butterfly over here that I can use for sizing if needed. Okay. But I'm just going to grab a little bit. Hang on, I moved all my tools out of my way. A little bit of ice milk. The, um... Rita says storms are around her some, sometimes. There's static at times. And Jesse Ann says sometimes your audio doesn't keep up with you working. <laughs> I know I talk fast. <laughs> I'll try and repeat things kind of a couple times in case it cuts out. But anything that you guys don't catch um, or if it kind of cuts out, just let me know. And I'll say it again. No problem. Sorry about that. All right. So I'm taking a piece of isomalt here. Maybe a little smaller than like a golf ball. And I'm going to roll it into a tube. You can always cut some down rather than adding it on top or adding to it is easier. So I tend to make it a little bit bigger than I think I'm going to need. And I'm just sort of rolling it to help cool it down, but I'm also pulling because rolling it alone won't elongate this like it would with fondant. The ice molt's too tough. So I am actually stretching it with my hands 
and I'm making one side get a little bit smaller. So it's not a huge difference, but just a little bit smaller on that end. Okay, I'm gonna cut some of this off. And just roll and sort of smooth over that cut area to make it slightly smaller. All right, I'm gonna use my, um, my palette knife to add some indents into the body. So this is all we're gonna do to add a little bit of interest into it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one section for the head, one section for the body, and then we're gonna have sort of the abdomen at the bottom um, separated. So what we'll do first is I'll just add an indent and I'm sort of rolling the tube on the mat while I do this. And you can use any straight edge for this. It can be a knife, it can be a blade um, or a spatula. It can be even the open edge of the scissors. You see how that just separates it a little bit. Then I'll do the body around the same size, maybe a little bit bigger of a segment. And I'm not cutting all the way through or trying to pierce it, I'm just indenting. If it gets a little bit too cool to do this, just lightly torch over the surface. Hmm? Mine's through. Hold on. Okay, mine's still it's going. Day, but I see you when I, I'm on the regular thing. Okay. <laughs> Facebook must be oh undergoing goodness. some maintenance today. Wow, crazy. Okay, so I'm just adding indents, one right after the other, over top of kind of the abdomen or the tail area. I didn't do it over the head or the body, but I just added that to the little tail and I think that just adds a really cute sort of shape. Then I'm going to add a slight bend to it. Okay, since it's going to be going up and over top of the dome, I just like to have that little bit of a bend. Okay, Super cute. So you can see that's very fast, very easy, but it definitely is going to add a lot to our butterflies to just kind of raise it up and make that 3D look. You could just leave it like this. You don't have to add any legs, you don't have to add antenna or anything. But I am going to show you how I did it if you would like to. But you could definitely just attach this or even keep it straight and attach the straight, you know, body directly to the cake. And that would be very pretty too. So different options and different levels to what you want to, how much kind of effort you want to put into yours. Okay. Let's steal my fan here for a second. All right. So I'm just cooling that body down so that it doesn't flatten when I set it down. You can definitely do these in brown as well if you wanted to do a brown, especially I think with like our um, vintage moths, that would be pretty. More of an antique look than a striking butterfly look. Even gold would be pretty, bronze. Lots of different ways you can change it up. All right, so for the legs and the antenna, we're just going to pull some little tubes. So I don't need to start with very much. Don't make yourself crazy and go too thin with these. We're just going to stretch the tube, maybe about the width of a toothpick or so. They are The bug is going to be balancing on these, so you don't want them too thin for that reason either. Okay, we'll start with the legs. Get rid of any uneven spots. Okay, and I'm just going to cut maybe half an inch to three quarter of an inch pieces. I'm going to need six of them. Since butterflies have six legs. And then very quickly I'll just add a little bend to each one of them. Not quite a right angle. Okay. Just to add a little bit more to them. Okay. If you want to leave kind of the back legs a little bit longer, that might help since it's going to be on a curved surface. So I'll take two of them, maybe these two are around the same length. Just straighten them slightly. And you can always make these once you know where it's going to kind of sit and everything as well. And then I'm also going to pull some smaller 
pieces. Okay, and we're going to make these into the antenna. So with these itty bitty little pieces, it's really important not to touch them too much. You notice I'm really not touching it other than the little bit I was stretching it out. Otherwise, they're definitely going to harden, and they're already hardening, so that's why I'm just reheating them with the torch. You can also work directly under your lamp if you do have a heat lamp. That can help to keep things a lot warmer. And then I'm just going to coil these. A little bit at the ends. We could, of course, do this more or less. Super cute. And I can cut them down shorter later. All right. So I'm going to add on the legs, okay, once everything has kind of started to cool. So, of course, we need three on each side. I'm going to put the slightly straighter ones to the back. And they're all going to be attached to the body, not to the head or to the abdomen. But if you have to um, add a little bit more room, you can do them to the abdomen more so than the head. <laughs> okay, and just make sure they kind of branch out. The front legs can come a little bit straighter along, kind of aligned with the head more so than jutting straight out. Be very careful not to torch the other um, legs when you go to torch again for the other side. You can even torch the end of the leg instead and then carefully grab the other end of the leg and attach it on or you can use tweezers. Tweezers are always a good tool with isomalt because it kind of extends your fingers and allows you to pick things up while they're hotter or to hold things as you are heating them. Okay, and I'm just kind of using my tools to smooth them in. These make really good uh, spiders too, if you get them round. Be super cute. It kind of looks like a scorpion right now, a little bit. <laughs> All right, so we're going to let this cool, and it is actually lifting up. I do have the base of the tail sitting down, which will give me another support. You can see when it's touching the level surface, um, the tail is also touching my hand, like it will be on the table. So if you want to add just another extra support, that can help. <clears throat> That's another reason why, <clears throat> sorry about that, another reason why I didn't want to do the small ones of the butterflies, because they would have to be really tiny, and they're not going to hold as much weight if they're that small. Of course, the wings don't weigh as much as the big ones, so it doesn't have to support as much weight, but I like it to be as strong as possible. Okay. All right. Just looks kind of like a creepy crawly right now, but once we get the wings on there and the antenna, it's definitely going to help. Okay. Check on how our dome is doing. It feels like it's doing good. Should be at least cool enough to pull out and show you the finished piece at the end. All right. Beautiful. So we're going to save the antenna um, to probably add after the wings because they're so tiny I don't want them to break off. But the wings should be cool now, so I'm going to take my clean tool and just tap them. Make sure there's not making a dent and they feel solid. I will go ahead get some of that excess out of here. Go ahead and peel those away. Those come out absolutely beautiful. I really liked this design because it's not, you know, as realistic of a monarch, but it still has the colors and kind of the, the layout of the monarch. So it's very sort of impressionistic of it, which I love. Where the blue one is, it has a little bit of like that blue morpho butterfly look, but it's a little bit more of a stained glass look, just in the shape of a butterfly. And that's how some of the other ones are as well. All right. Beautiful. So there's our wings. You can go ahead and put those on anything that you wanted to. But of course, we're going to attach them to the back of our butterfly body. Okay. 
always kind of figure out how it's going to sit first. Okay, I don't really want to heat the legs, um, so I'm just going to be very careful about that. Okay, and then I'm mostly going to heat the wing. I'll actually do them both at the same time. You could do one at a time, but sometimes it's a little easier to stick them both at once because you know where they're going. Just like that. All right. Hey, Mom, would you be able to grab me something? I just need my fan from the back table so I can cool this down. Where is it? It's right behind me. I just have it on the dome right now. And of course you can open these up more. You can open them up uh, less. Anywhere is fine. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. So you can make it kind of more flat, if depending on how you're going to see it. So if you're going to be looking at this piece from the side, you want them to be a little bit more closed. If you're going to be looking at it from the back, how you guys are seeing it now, you want to open them up a little bit more. Or you can go somewhere in the middle if you're not really sure. Okay. And it does take them, since there's a lot of weight pushing down on the piece, it takes them a couple of minutes to cool. So I'm just going to be patient with it. And kind of just let the cool air get to those attachment points. If any legs pop off or anything, it's not a big deal. They're very easy to put back on. You can use liquid isomalt as a glue to glue things together as well, but for really fragile, um, more thin pieces like this, they don't like to add extra heat and glue because it takes a lot longer for it to cool, which means the heat can kind of be radiating out and could melt things a little bit easier. And plus, there's not a ton of room for uh, attachment points that are going to be hidden on this piece. You pretty much see all of the attachment points. So if I had a big glob of glue on, on the end, it wouldn't be as sightly. Okay. Almost there. They're still a little wiggly, so I'm gonna practice my patience skills and then just let it cool off all the way. All right. How are you guys doing? Any questions? Is anybody following along today? Or are you guys watching and gonna work on it later if you plan to make it? I always have these saved, so if you ever want to go back and reference them, if you do end up getting a project uh, that you're going to use these for, or you have kind of a later date that you're going to be using it, these are always saved on my Facebook, and I also upload them to my YouTube. I have a whole playlist of my past live stream play dates, but I do try and make them, so if you guys want to sit down and practice with me at the same time, you definitely can. If we don't do anything too complicated in these, that way we can all kind of get done a project. It's always a good kind of introduction or basics project to just kind of try out new techniques and new styles. Lori says she's watching today. Yvonne just got here from work. Hello, welcome. Hope you had a good day. All right, so we're almost there. I'm also checking to make sure it stands on its own because that's, of course, a very important thing um, that it's not going to be weighed down one way or the other. Rita's going to do hers later. Awesome. Make sure if you guys are making these to post a picture uh, on your page and tag me or to post it in the See Me Torch team or both um, and uh, definitely show off your stained glass butterflies. We'd love to see them. Ooh, good. Stacy's doing hers. Uh, Cookies and more said, can you post a link for this kit? Yes. I'll do it. Okay, thank you. Mom will post it on my profile here in the comments. And I do save all my past project kits as well, so if there's ever one that you're watching a replay of the live for, um, for the most part we have all of them listed on our website, and we always discount them 20% off of rather than getting everything individual. So, All right, so here is our beautiful 3D butterfly. And I love that you can see through it from the other side too. So it's not quite as shiny as the ice melt side, but it still looks really, really stunning. No matter what angle you're seeing the butterfly from and you can see through it, which I think just adds such a pretty delicate look. Whereas, you know, if you make these out of fondant and gum paste, um, they can be, you know, very pretty as well, but they definitely don't have that sort of glassy see-through look that I think just makes them look so light and airy. It's just such a unique way to make butterflies. All right, there we go. 
Perfect. So I'm also going to attach the little antenna onto the head, and then we'll see if our dome is ready to unmold. All right. So we'll see how big that we want these. I love Rita's comment, just to let you know. She said people asking how she got her ship in the bottle. Oh, I love bottle. it. <laughs> That's awesome. Your ship in a bottle came out so great from last uh, play date, Rita. That is so fun. I love it. That's the best compliment, right? When somebody thinks that it's real and they can't figure out how you do it. And then tomorrow, Emily's doing a twist on it. She is. Yeah, she's doing her message in a bottle. So she's actually putting an isomal oops, message down into her bottle and showing how she does that which is awesome, so make sure you guys tune in to live just like this. What time is Emily's tomorrow? I believe it's 7 p.m. EST. I posted the banner last night, though. It should be on there if you guys want to check it out and see the project. So I just torched the ends of those antenna to put them on. Okay. And I think that that adds such a pretty light, airy, sort of whimsical look to it as well, having the antenna. All right. Jesse Young's going to do it later, and Stacy's doing it now. Awesome. I think that butterflies, too, are just one of those things that are never going to go out of style. They're just always a classic theme. Um, they're always pretty, and I just think it's one of those things that you can never get enough. <laughs> At least that's for me. All right. Yeah, Rita said she'll have to do that one, too. Yes, Definitely. Yeah, since you have the bottle. Right, yeah. Do Oop. all the things. I think I knocked the table. Oops. Oops. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, Did you're good. That? No, I think I bumped it when I put the mold down. But that's okay, because I'll show you guys how to put it back together. It happens, right? All right. All of my legs are intact, so that actually makes it the easiest. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pop those back on. Like I said earlier, sometimes things break, but we can fix them. That's the beauty of ice malt is that it all goes back together super easy okay so i'm just gonna torch torch a little bit on this side all right okay and ice mold smooths over so easily too that any little marks that it may have made will just smooth over when I torch them away. All right, there we go. Legs already back on, see how fast that is? I'll do the little antenna. He looks funny with just one. I know. <laughs> All right, I'll cool that back down for a second before we re-add those wings. All right. <laughs> Rita says, you could have made a fly swatter and just laid it next to the butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. So you're already going back together. That's what I love about ice mold is it's just really, really forgiving. Tiny bits. Warm sticks to warm better than warm to cool for so for these big pieces it's best if you can heat the body just a little bit too. And back to cooling. <laughs> All right. Okay. So that's okay. It just gives our dome a little bit more time to cool, right? It was still a little bit warm anyway, so we will just put that back together. And that took, you know, less than a minute to put back together. So if it happens to you, it's no big deal. I break things all the time, too. It's just the nature of sugar. It is fragile, and that's what makes it so amazing, right? Paula had to step away for a minute. She goes, uh, but this will be uh, replayed, correct? Yes, I will have the replay saved on my Facebook, and I usually, within the next few days, uh, put it onto my YouTube channel as well, so it's there a little bit easier to find. I have that whole playlist of past play dates and a whole bunch of other videos on there, too. All right, one more time. <laughs> but you can see, I mean, the legs... Right back on there, can't even tell. Okay, so just 
just cooling it down, making sure it's balanced. Mike and I generally break all of Sydney's pieces when we're traveling anyway. <laughs> she has to do this a lot. But it's important to know how to fix things, right? Because you never know what's going to happen on a delivery or as you're assembling the cake together. So it's important to have things break so you know how to fix it. Sounded a lot more philosophical <laughs> than I was intending. <laughs> Just about there. Give it an extra 30 seconds just in case. And then we'll unmold our dome. I think my dome's still a little bit warm, so we're gonna cross our fingers that it won't melt. But I want to show you how pretty the colors are. So even if it melts a little bit, it's okay. It's abstract, right? Alright. I think we're just about good with the butterfly here. Rita has a good question. Yeah. How do you transport in the heat? Um, usually I would just make sure that my car is pre-cooled down and uh, just, you know, try not to have too much time where the ice melt's going to be going in the heat itself. So coming from the cool kitchen uh, into the cooled car and making sure that it's glazed as well uh, is a really big, of course, thing to make sure if you have any humidity. I also do like to keep my pieces in an airtight container after they're, the glaze is dry, just to uh, keep any outside elements from, you know, changing back and forth. But I used to travel with these um, when we would drive across the country. I mean, I drove through back and Death forth. Valley. Yeah, um, through the desert to California from Florida and back a couple times. Um, and, you know, I never had any problem with them, really. A lot of pieces, uh, you know, might have a little, like, like this antenna broke off or something like that, but that's easy to fix. As far as the stable, um, kind of the stability of the ice melt though, it's fine. We do try and make our ice melt as stable as possible with the semi ice melt, which does help to make sure your recipe is really good for any, um, you know, variations of climate. But as, as long as it's glazed, it's in a sealed container, um, you shouldn't have too much of a problem. And you use the plastic grocery bags a lot. Yeah, I use plastic grocery bags to stuff around them rather than bubble wrap, because bubble wrap's a little bit hard, but the grocery bags are soft and you can tuck them up and underneath and they don't stick like paper would. And uh, yeah, obviously don't set these up, you know, in a cake in the sun outside for four hours, but as long as you put the pieces on, you know, at the last minute, you wouldn't want to have a cake out in the heat for that long anyway. So same rules apply for your cakes and then your ice melt pieces. Just make sure you don't put the ice melt in the um, fridge. So ice melt pieces go on after the cake comes out of the fridge. All right, there we go. So we're gonna unmold our dome next. Okay, so I'm just flexing, super duper pretty. Okay, I do have some bubbles on the surface there that we're gonna torch away. That's natural with silicone, it just collects bubbles. So we are going to torch those, but actually it looks really pretty. So if you wanted to leave sort of that crystallized look, you definitely could. Okay, this is gonna make sure that our Glitter really shines through, and I'm gonna do this in light layers, so I'm not doing it all at once. I am cooling it, especially since my dome is a little bit warm right now. Jesse Ann uses plastic wrap, kind of squished up and around the piece. Great idea, yeah. And Rita said it's interesting, she would think the plastic would stick to the ice mold. Yeah, no, as long as the ice mold is glazed and it's dried, it is not gonna stick. Paper has more of a chance of sticking because it's porous. So I don't like to use um, packing paper or tissue paper or anything on the ice melt for that reason. I do remember um, somewhere we traveled to was very cold and a piece was under the heat coming through the vent. Yes, um, and drastic temperature changes like that can affect the ice melt. So definitely make sure it's kind of a consistent temperature as much as you can and it doesn't go from really hot to really cold. And if it does have to, it has to go slowly. We definitely learned that. <laughs> it's all a learning process, right? And the pressure um, through the, like the mountains, mm -hmm. the very tall mountains, had more to do with it than um... right because it was a it was a blown piece, I believe, and mm -hmm. the pressure inside the blown piece expanded, so the heat um, from the vent kind of softened, and then the pressure pushed it outwards um, as it, the piece just got pressurized. Since we were, of course, at no elevation to start with. <laughs> Below. Yeah, pretty much. All right, so. Well, I know you, you left like a little hole in the back, right? 
Yes, I did actually. I, I popped a little hole with a hot wire in my blown pieces so that it had a vent so that that wouldn't happen. Getting there. Isn't that pretty? Still have a couple little bubbles around the base I can clear up, but I just love how glittery and sparkly it looks, and it has sort of that almost shadowy or mystical sort of look with the clear and the blue all mixed together there. Okay, so I could take a lot more time and keep torching this and smoothing it over as much as I want to, but I'm going to go ahead and just cool this down, and we're just going to use our torch to stick our butterflies on. Same thing with our other little butterfly we made. So I have my little butterfly here. It looks really pretty as well. Another reason that I do like the transfer sheets compared to the cello sheets like we were talking about earlier is the transfer sheets have a little bit of opacity to them. So they have a slight white um, kind of effect, uh, like a, a white opacity compared to the cello sheets, which have none. They have completely clear. The only opacity you have is dark colors. So they're a lot easier to see through the cello sheets and they're a little bit harder to see on colors um, for the backgrounds or on busy background. So if you have something going on behind it, it's going to be really hard to see the design where these pop a little better because they have a little bit of opacity to them. Um, same thing with the icing sheets, except in the opposite direction. Those are totally solid. So they're great uh, for not letting anything behind it take away from the design, but you're not going to have the light kind of glassy look to it. So it just kind of depends on what look you're going for. I like the transfers because they're kind of in the middle. All right. And all we're going to do is we're going to torch a little bit. Pick my favorite side here. If I have a favorite side, they're also pretty. Okay, torch a little bit and stick it on. Doesn't take very much. And then the same thing with the big butterfly. I've lost all my comments on this one. I can check on here if it doesn't come back. Okay. Sometimes I have to swipe back and forth. That's what I'm doing. All right, I don't torch the legs because I don't want them to melt, so I just torched the dome. And it kind of rested uh, or worked out size-wise that the tail is resting on the table, which I'm fine with because that adds another support. I'll show you guys this from the side in a second. It might be sinking down a little bit because my dome is definitely still too warm, but I wanted to at least show you guys putting it together. I got him. You got him? Okay, good, good. <laughs> I'm not as good at this as Sydney is. <laughs> Technology is, always has a mind of its own. All right, so I'm going to pop my camera back up here. Hello again. All right, let's make sure you guys aren't falling. <laughs> mm, that should be okay. Maybe. Don't move. <laughs> All right, let me lift this up to show you guys from the side. And there's our beautiful butterfly. Have our wings, and I love how those ridges just look and reflect on the back. Sitting on our dome. Our dome's a little bit flatter because, like I said, it did melt slightly. Let it cool longer. Yeah, just let it cool longer than I did. I just wanted to have a finished piece to show you guys. But I really love how it came out. Here is the finished one here. that I made originally with the blue, and I love the blue too. I don't know which one I like better, of the orange or the blue. I think that they're both really, really pretty in their own way, and I like that they both match with the small butterfly because they both have orange and blue um, in them, or this one has both orange and blue in it, so it just kind of adds a super nice look to it. Ta-da! <laughs> oh, thank you, guys. Susan says, wings now, body later. Awesome. <laughs> Very nice. And again, you can make that big butterfly just folded like we did the little one too and that saves a ton of time um you can make a whole bunch of them i think these would be so pretty all over a cake um especially like a big beautiful wedding cake or a birthday cake and just have them all over it i think that that would be so so pretty um and it just adds a little bit more to them right a little bit more interest it lifts them up so kind of having it sitting on the little feet definitely will help if you wanted to add a support into them to insert into the cake you can before um instead of putting it like on the dome if you're going to put them right on the cake i would take a skewer or a uh, wooden dowel or whatever you wanted to use as your support and dip it in ice malt and just attach it to sort of its stomach um, so that it had something when you push the butterfly in 
it actually has like a prong to insert into the cake and that would stabilize it as well. You could do a few of them even um, so that you have a few things and it doesn't spin like it would on one. So just having that to kind of grab down into the cake will definitely help. Oh, I'm so glad you guys like it. I definitely want to see your butterflies. So make sure to tag me if you post pictures or to post it in the CB Torch Team Facebook group, which if you are not a member, definitely join because it is so much fun. A super awesome ice melt group, uh, no drama. We just post pictures of our pieces, ask questions. Um, we do special discounts and uh, games and challenges and prizes every month. So definitely join if you are not already because it's super duper fun. All right, let me know if you guys have any final questions. We do have some exciting things coming up. Um, so we have Emerly's live demo is tomorrow night, I believe at 7 p.m. EST here on the Simi Cakes page. Like we were saying, she's doing that awesome um, message in a bottle. So she's going to be using our uh, small bottle mold to make a really, really cool um, message in a bottle piece, which you definitely want to check out. Um, let's see. Our next Zoom class is going to be the Beach House Cookie, which I have back here. Show you guys. I believe that's in two weeks two or three weeks. So there's still time to sign up if you want to join us. We're going to be making our cookie. It is a standing cookie, okay, but it is our gingerbread, which is going to be super fun with ice melt windows and sun and this really fun wave technique at the bottom I'm going to show you guys. That one is a Zoom class, so it's a little bit more uh, advanced, but it's open to all skill levels and it's uh, going to be kind of a one-on-one -on -one or um, like a uh, group on Zoom and you guys can ask questions. We're going to do every step along together. That's it said seven? Yes, yeah, seven EST, I believe. Um, let's see what else do we have. Yeah, daylight time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ET. Um, let's see what else we have going on. Tammy Varela is going to be doing a live demo this month, I believe on the 19th. Um, which is super exciting. We do have all of our schedule, too, in the Torch team. Uh, on the cover photo, I usually do a um, banner of all of our calendar for the month. Uh, we, of course, have CookieCon Orlando coming up at the end of this month. Uh, hopefully, I'll see some of you guys there. I have classes there, and then we also have our booth, so make sure to come say hello if you're going to be there. I'll be doing lots of fun demos at the uh, booth as well, and I still do have some spots open. I think I have one spot open for my Halloween class, right? Uh, yes. My Halloween cookie class, other than that, um, both classes are almost, or the first class is sold out. Uh, the other one has one spot left. And then the two sessions of my holiday cookies uh, both have a couple of spots. I have an the AM and a PM. Only, the, I forget if it's AM or PM only has one spot left. The Halloween? Uh, no, that's for holiday. Oh, holiday. Okay. So there's Halloween only a few. Halloween has one spot. <laughs> And then I think the, I can't remember if it's the morning or the afternoon, one has a couple seats and one has one. Okay, perfect. So definitely snag that if you want to do an add-on class with me. Otherwise, come say hi at the booth. Am I missing anything for right now? I think that's all of August. All right, awesome. And again, it is Simi Splash Anniversary Month uh, in August as well. So we are doing tons of highlights on our Simi's Color Splash Colors because it's been two years uh, since they launched. And we worked on those uh, with the Sweet Color Lab, um, who are amazing. And we have our, here, I had it here somewhere. Steamy Color Splash Colors, so we've been posting a lot of uh, really fun videos and tutorials of how to do it, we're going to be doing that all month long. Um, I just posted our new skin tone mixing guides, which is really exciting. I think today I'm going to post, uh, I did a video of it, so you can see how I mix all the colors, but I posted all the guides of how to get different skin tones. That's for mixing it in. For mixing into ice malt, yes. Uh, let's see, Crystal said holiday cookies, count me in. Yay, that would be so much fun. Awesome. And uh, yeah, so make sure to check out everything that's going on. I do have another play date planned for September, but I'm still working on it. So I don't have it quite ready to show you guys, but I will post about it as soon as I have it done this week. So uh, definitely keep your eyes peeled because it's going to be something fun. And I'm planning something kind of Halloween inspired because it's almost time to start thinking so about crazy. the holidays. I know. Um, and I'm very excited for Halloween because it is definitely one of my favorite holidays. So lots of spooky things going to be coming out soon um, with our classes and our demos and our play dates. All right. Oh, our next skill social is on Monday, too, I believe, yes. um, which is going to be ice malt sales. So if you want to learn how to make some ice malt sales, uh, super fun. We do skill socials, which are just an hour of dedicated practice time. So it's OK if you don't have any experience or if you have had experience, it's for all levels. It's just fun to kind of sit down and work on a project all together. I'll do a short demo of it um, so you can learn if you haven't done it before. And then we all just kind of work on it and uh, play around and brainstorm. And it's super fun. So uh, that one does not have a recording. It is a, only 
live event because it's just an hour of kind of sitting down and dedicating an hour to working on our art. But they're super fun and we do them every month. So if you can't make this month, definitely check one out next time. All right, awesome. Well, I really appreciate you guys uh, hanging out with me today. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend. Uh, and yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed. Bye, guys. See you later. Bye. Thank you.